Disaster strikes, you need to get a signal into that building, but the basic mini kit won't get the signal where you need it to go. What do you do? That's today's episode. So now I'm inside the building and I try to do a speed test. I'm only 75 to 85 feet away from my truck, but I have a couple of walls in between me and the truck and I can't even pick up a signal. So we learned in the last episode how helpful these uh, $40 routers are, the router mini. But let's, uh, keeping consistent with what we said outside, let's imagine there's no power inside this facility, so I can't even hook it up. I'm early on the scene. What do I do? This is an LXT battery, and one of the reasons I like this is a temporary power source. Battery itself has electronics to protect the battery from over discharge. I'm using a cradle that I got off of Amazon. And this just gives you power leads, a fuse, and an on-off switch. So you can take your LXT battery and I can power this switch on. It's now at 17.9 volts. I've looked at the back of the router mini and I cross-referenced the plug and I found the same plug. I have hooked up something called a buck converter. So this takes this 12 to 24 volt input and knocks it down to nine volts DC. And I'm getting 9.17. And I'm going to plug this in. And you can see we have the own light going. The speed is radically different just having this router. So I'm gonna now put this router kind of here. So now the router is kind of halfway between the truck and I'm going to go right back over to where I was. Hello Jackie. And I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to run that speed test again. So this is fantastic. I now have a mobile way to put a router in a building that has no power and I can radically, I mean radically, change the performance of the Starlink Mini without having to rely on there being any power in the building. At least it would buy me time to set up some, uh, some good consistent power. This is a, a game changer that's portable that can allow you to go out on the scene and get things going immediately to provide help until you get a more permanent setup. We're going to, instead of using Wi-Fi, we're going to run a cable from the truck into this router to see if that improves the performance. When you get your cable, you want to get outdoor cable. You want to get copper. Now this is OFC, that's oxygen free copper. It's just a higher grade of copper, how it's processed. You probably want to stay away from what's CCA, that would be copper clad aluminum. And you want to get at least 23 AWG, 23 gauge uh, CAT 6 cable. With the cabling, I was able to get it just about eight feet away from where I was before. But now let's do a speed test and see how that does. We are getting an even faster using the cable than using Wi Fi. And also notice the pings there. They're much lower and there's less jitter. So you have not just a faster connection, but a snappier, better connection as well. So if you have the ability to run a wire, um, that could be a good thing, especially if you're going longer term. This is something you're gonna keep as a persistent connection. Now we're gonna go one more level of complexity. So let's say we have a more permanent setup in our relief center our command center. Well, now we're gonna use a cable, but we're also gonna let the cable supply power to the mini. Just as I used a converter to take this LXT battery to supply the router, I could use the same battery and use another buck converter that takes 12 to 24 volts and outputs 48 volts DC. And I could run all that, both the router 
and the mini by powering over internet um, using this converter. Now, when I run both the router and the mini off of this one battery, I'm probably going to get somewhere around 90 minutes. And so for running all the cable and stuff, I'm not sure that makes sense. Whereas if I'm going wireless short term, uh, this battery makes a lot of sense when I can probably run it for 12 hours. We're now gonna imagine if I'm going through the extent of running a physical cable, I probably have a battery bank, a generator or power has been restored. Here I have a Meanwell RSP 320 48 volt power supply. When you run power over ethernet, you typically want to use 48 volts. And the reason is when you're using this cat six cable, these wires are tiny. So more voltage means less amperage, means less loss in the wire due to resistance and heat. So we want to use 48 volts. So I'm going to turn this on with my power. It's running off of AC, 120 volts. So I have gone ahead and wired up this DC 5521 cord. And I have wired up on this side to the ethernet injector, the male portion. And when I connect these two, then I'm gonna have power to this ethernet injector. I'm gonna wire this up to this side of the ethernet and this side to the truck. So let's kind of go through that together. This says power POE, power over ethernet. Forgive me while I do this. Once again, I would have a watertight connector that would connect to this to make it watertight. I'm just not gonna do that at this moment. And I'm gonna connect up this end to my mini. And now I take the cable that was running into the house or the church or whatever snap it in place okay this little dongle splits out the ethernet and the power that is all running through here from what we have inside the house now we have the 48 volt power supply powered and it's injecting power into this ethernet injector we have the white cord is going out to the truck to the um, splitter onto the Starlink Mini, and this black CAT6 cable is going to our router Mini that's on the tabletop. So why don't we run a speed test and let's see how this does with the Ethernet injector. So for some reason, the power of Ethernet is a slower connection than just the cable running. Um, I'm not sure if that's just cloud cover or the satellites aren't as good a position or what, but we got about 176 or 179, something like that. Um, but wow, when we had the cable hooked up, um, we were getting 500, which is the best I've ever seen. So based on what I'm seeing today, I would not do the power over ethernet for a temporary solution, except if I, for instance, had my mini uh, outside in a clearing and maybe it's 50 feet or 75 feet away from a tent or an RV and I have limited battery power, it would be great to be able to turn that on and off remotely so you're out in the rain or the snow or something. You don't want to get out of your uh, protected environment to go out and turn this thing on and off to save your battery. So having that rem remote single cable could be a very nice feature, but I think otherwise if I uh, have the ability to just use the wired or the battery powered router and just string a cable if I need faster speeds, I would probably do that personally. So as always, I hope you have a great rest of your week. And thanks.